why this silent opening yeah the i mean the beginning of week three now the not week three it's because i am shocked with the news uh, so this is a part and parcel of uh, everything you cannot avoid So at the beginning of this week, that is week 13, I heard the, exactly on Tuesday, so it was like 20th November in our morning, it was because it was from US, so the time as per our zone was different. Uh, my previous conference paper was, uh, was like very borderline and somehow it was rejected. Uh, I know that this conference is very competitive because luck has like uh, I mean like 30 around 30 percent or 25 percent acceptance rate which is really really tough but still I accept I expected that my paper was not perfect but somehow it should go through the way it was but it is what it is you cannot avoid this like I was coming through a nice quote just to pamper myself and uh, motivate by mood that uh, you you I mean like you go through these circumstances throughout your PhD it's always like up down up down it's like the famous lines from Julius Caesar which we read in our 10th grade in India was like there's a tide in the affairs of men so it's like sometimes you are in that high tide and once you are in the high tide then there comes a fall so you cannot always stay in the high tide uh, someday you are going to fall so it may be in the form of rejection from a conference or it may be in the form of two years towards the end of your phd and your phd gets extended so in that sense like to take the positive out of it because i always try to take the positive uh, out of all these negative situations and circumstances because you need to move ahead in your life and start forgetting the things which bother you a lot uh, try to find alternative ways to tackle them instead of just being lost by thinking of these uh, stupid things like Oh, what is going to happen my conference paper was rejected so you see like uh, I also made and the submission as I mentioned last week check the in the top right corner for another conference so what I do is like I keep on producing work made by literature experiment and then try to submit to the good quality conferences sponsored by ACM Springer and something like that and then wait for the result so it's not that always your paper will get accepted but from that comments uh, sometimes they're absurd like in my case it was a borderline like the average score was around zero if it had been one a zero means neutral it's not negative or positive if it had been little bit positive like around one then the paper would have been accepted there are three reviewers you get average score so i won't go in the details of the reviews but some reviews are very absurd it seemed like they did not read the complete details of the what i wrote in the paper and sometimes they skipped some parts and asked to justify that why did i miss that but it was already justified in the discussion section of the paper but still never mind like i as i said i don't want to repeat this negative instances or mishappenings so i will just focus on the positive what i learned from that so there are two constructive things for me like what i'm going to do now is i'm going to talk with my promoters and my daily supervisors and i will try to reshape that conference work for a journal because that work is really interesting it only needs some slight finishing touches before you can reshape it to a nice journal submission and the advantage of a journal is that uh, in conferences if the something like this happens in most conferences they don't have a rebuttal period where you reply your complaints like maybe the reviewer misunderstood something or maybe they did not read through the whole paper what you infer from their comments but in general you have a rebuttal period so in conference you cannot in most of the conferences because it takes a lot of time and effort to do this process 
so what you can do in the journals is like it goes back and forth so they might ask you in the first stage for major or minor revisions and then you reply back and it goes back and forth so it may take like two stages three stages but at the end most cases your paper gets published so the thing is like you are assured that if you get such negative comments then you can talk with them back and forth but here it's like a one-way communication so once you hear the results even if some of the comments are really absurd you cannot reply back but anyways i will focus on the positives so this was the information about the comparison between a conference submission and a journal submission like what are the, some of the advantages of journals and so that's going to be my future goals to reshape this for a journal and uh, for my i mean I know it was really not that exciting news but in a way I can look at the positive so what I understood I had two research questions for the paper and the second research question was somehow not that much I mean because you have a page limit so I could not elaborate that much on the second research question so that was their main overall impression what i got from commonly from three reviewers that uh, the second research question somehow uh, unbalanced the paper so i need to focus on that obviously for a journal you don't have that much of a page constraint you can elaborate whatever you want okay Okay, I, I should mention this because just now I saw I was browsing through my Twitter feed because I always see Twitter. Twitter is very good instrument for research and sharing your perspectives. A lot of researchers use Twitter. Uh, so I saw a nice quote like I'm just trying to rephrase it. So it's better to be a, a ship which is uh, sinking. I mean to which is venturing into the wild sea instead of being harbored always. So that's what the thing is like if you keep on producing works that are worthy of submissions based on the discussion with a promoter, supervisor and your own confidence, then that can be later reshaped or remerged with other works and can be made into different submissions. But if you just sit silent thinking that I'll have a 100% acceptance rate and I'll just submit once in a year or something like that so that I get never rejected and have that fear of rejection. So that will eventually bring you down. I mean, you should not have ever fear of rejection. You should always like, even if your uh, acceptance rate, uh, maybe I know, I don't know, like uh, maybe very less, maybe you have submitted four times in a year, which is really good. And if your work is worthy and uh, praised by your supervisors, like they appreciate what you're doing, uh, you're putting on a lot of hard work, uh, you're burning the midnight oil, or maybe putting in more hours. But still, suppose you get like one or two acceptance and the other two or three are rejected. That doesn't matter. So don't be try to be always in the harbor safe. Uh, venture into the wild and someday you will find success. That's what like I need to motivate myself. So I'm cooking nice meals and uh, eating good food and talking with people. So that's what helps you to elevate your mood. You cannot be stuck in that damp, uh, soggy uh, bottom level after you hear that news and one more good thing was when I heard this rejection at that time I was in the university so when you're surrounded by so many people uh, you start to do the postmortem that is the post hoc analysis of what happened and what are the constructive points you can get from the feedback and then immediately move on for I mean like you get to hear some motivating thoughts and also some suggestions how you can reshape it to a journal and there are a lot of other things you hear so I cannot go into all the details in this video so I will mention these uh, all my thoughts and all my uh, I won't focus any of the frustrations because I don't I always try to uplift my mood myself because I always try to be positive I never try to focus on the negatives there's no point of focusing on the negatives just bring on the positive so for my case positive was like I'll now go for a journal which has a high impact obviously although it will take more time and uh, I have feedback for my second research question and somehow what i felt some lines i need to make it more simplistic because sometimes the reviewer you have to consider him as a god uh, doesn't understand some line that means you are not explaining it to a third party or an unknown person in the most simplistic way that it can be explained so that you need to take care of so that's what i think uh, i won't elaborate much this week 
but as you can see now like i'm pumped up so that means like this was the mood going towards the end of the week obviously you'll be pumped up to again work for the next submission this is how life goes it's always up and down up and down so for more details about my academic rejection uh, check my blog link below i have written a blog on this like very short blog on what i feel about academic rejections and what are the lessons that you can learn so the main title is focused on that quote which i got from twitter it's not my quote i learned from somewhere that uh, better to be venturing into the wild and be in the sinking ship instead of uh, being harbored so meet you next week with a fresh new experience because next week i'm going to start experiment in zoid which i mentioned like in week seven i think you can check the information card on the top right corner uh, we'll be working on experiment which will be the main focus of next week and bye bye